Hello, what's up? It's Tom. We're going to do a Twins 10 today. Twins 10. Usually when I do these videos, it's a Twins 5 and we tackle five topics. I've got at least 10 topics that I want to quickly talk about today. Let's just get right into it. Let's start at the top and kind of go down uh, the, the front office. Derek Falvey and the rest of the front office, however you want to lump them together. Falvey, Levine, everybody else. Um, what are my thoughts in the front office? I said this coming into this season that if they can't win a playoff game this year, they should be gone. That should be it. Uh, this is a results-based business. There are only 30 of these jobs. Um, this team was very clearly built to compete this year. Um, so if they cannot get that done, I don't really care what the, <laughs> um, the reasons are for it beyond that. Um, you know, we, we've had years and years and years of, you know, if one year you can say it was injuries, uh, what are you going to, you know, you run out of excuses at a certain point and you can't use the same ones over and over again. Um, so if it seems like I don't really talk about them much, I have it very black and white, very simple in my mind that that's, that's the bar. And if they, if they can do it, I'm opening to them staying. If they can't, let's get somebody else in here. Our next topic is related to that. What about this Luis Arise trade. What, what's going on there? How do you think that impacts sort of their legacy or whatever? Um, certainly things don't look good right now. Um, I do think Pablo Lopez has pitched much better than a lot of his metrics, uh, sort of traditional things like ERA indicate. I still like that he's in the organization. I feel confident that he's going to be a nice piece. Um, at the time of the trade, I, I thought the Twins won that trade. Um, I'm not ready to completely come off of that yet because there's a whole lot of story left to be written considering Jose Salas and Byron Chirillo, um are 20 and 18 years old. Now, Salas is off to a horrible start this year uh, with the Cedar Rapids Colonels. That's not encouraging at all, uh, to be honest. Chirillo's still way down in the Florida Complex League. He's barely played this year, of course, being only 18 years old. Um, again, again, I like Pablo Lopez a lot, so I don't, I'm not really uh, prepared to call this some disaster of a trade. We'll we'll see what happens. You know, the first what three months or whatever it's been uh, aren't looking real great, but it's not like Pablo has been a complete disaster himself. So we'll see how that one develops. Still, I wish that you know they could have found another way. Three days before the trade happened, I was basically begging them to keep Luis Arise and sign Michael Walker instead. That looks like a pretty damn good take at this time. Um, although I didn't really, I, I think I was pretty surprised by the, the numbers that Waka got when he signed. But he's pitched better than Pablo so far, uh, and they could have potentially kept Arise. All, all, you know, hindsight 2020 stuff, of course. And maybe Waka would have never signed here. Maybe he had no interest in, in pitching in, for Minnesota. You know, San Diego's a pretty nice place to land. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we can only play the what-if game so far is my, my main point. But I'll leave with this thought on the, uh, the rise trade. The one thing that I don't, that it does bother me about this is some people have tried to paint this that the Twins were motivated to get rid of Luis Arise. I didn't see it that way. I saw it as the Marlins were incredibly motivated to get him. Um, that storyline really dragged on for quite a long time. We knew that the Marlins were interested in Luis Arise. I don't recall, I could be misremembering, but I don't recall there ever being another team to where there was, you know, any reporting of conversations that were going on. Now, I'm sure if if uh, word got out that the Twins were were listening on a rise, there were certainly other teams that were calling on him. Uh, but the Marlins definitely were the most aggressive team, you know, again, from the outside looking in. And, you know, it did not seem to me like the Twins were, like, actively shopping a rise. Now, sticking with kind of the top uh, theme, we're going to talk about Rocco Baldelli and, you know, kind of in that same vein, David Popkins. Um, you know, I'm a big players got to play guy. Um, I'm a big, I've said this before. I really think if you were to replace Rocco Baldelli, you're not going to get, like if, if Rocco was fired tomorrow and Jace Tingler is managing, you are not going to see that big of a difference in how this team is managed from day to day. You're not going to see that big of a difference in the lineups. You're not going to see that big of a difference in how the starting rotation is managed. You know, when guys are taken out of games, you're not going to see that big of a difference in how the bullpen's managed. The Twins already are doing a lot of things that a lot of other teams are doing anyway. Um, I just don't see that there's going to be some kind of big change, especially when you have a veteran team to the degree that the Twins are. Talking specifically about the lineup, I don't think like... 
Christian Vasquez is like, ooh, what's David Popkins want me to do today? I don't think so. I, I, any of these guys that have been in the league for four or five years, uh, they know how to handle their business. They are the ones that are making horrible swing decisions, which in my opinion is the biggest problem with this lineup. Obviously, that manifests itself with a bunch of strikeouts, which we've seen. That manifests itself with a lot of poor hitting with runners in scoring position. And I know everybody kind of attached onto that quote from Royce Lewis about um, them preaching, you know, hunt mistakes. Um, I think that's probably a little bit overblown. Uh, people, people have acted like that's the Twins' main uh, strategy, and then that's all they're telling anybody to do, and I'm sure it's way more nuanced than that. Um, it's very difficult from the outside looking in to try to really determine what uh, what like David Popkins is doing, because the Twins have multiple hitting coaches. Also, the instruction that they're giving probably isn't just blanketed to every hitter uh, in this lineup. It's probably very individualized. Um, so... I, I, but sort of to wrap up that thought on Rocco Popkins, um, would I be upset if those guys got let go today? No, I wouldn't. Uh, at a certain point when your team is underperforming to this degree that this Twins team is, um, you are putting yourself at risk of being fired. And kind of in that same line uh, of thinking with the front office, there are only 30 of these jobs. Um, and this is a performance-based industry, and we can see the performance. We can quantify so many little things uh, with baseball in particular um, that, yeah, I think everybody, everybody, anybody in the front office, anybody in the coaching staff has put themselves at risk um, right now. Now, again, I'm still a players got to play guy, but it's a lot easier to fire, say, David Popkins than it is Carlos Correa, which is the next guy I want to talk about. Um, this team is playing as poorly as it is. If you want to boil it down, I agree with this. is not an original thought from me, but I've agree, I will echo and agree with the people that have said this is a Carlos Correa, Byron Buxton problem. These are supposed to be the two best guys on the team. Um, they're not performing. Um, for Carlos Correa, um, you know, again, kind of on the theme of, of swing decisions, I don't know what's going on. You know, he, he may be not healthy you know he's had a back issue that certainly probably is not helping um i'm not sure i it's pretty bizarre how poorly he's done um over this large of a sample so far i'm sure he's putting a lot of pressure on himself but this is a guy who you know former number one overall pick you know world series champion this guy has i don't think pressure really is what bothers him you know, it would be very strange if all of a sudden Carlos Correa, this deep into his career, can't handle the pressure. Uh, it's been very frustrating. The quality of his at-bats on a consistent basis is not good. Byron Buxton needs to go on the injured list. That, that is, If there was one move you told me that I think the Twins should make immediately, that would be it, to be honest. But this is another thing that has kind of bothered me that people keep saying, Byron can't play the outfield. If Byron could play the outfield, if he was healthy enough to play the outfield, he would be playing the outfield the Twins have said this many times. Rocco said this many times. He is not healthy enough to play the outfield. Should he be playing at all? Should he be playing at all? If he's not healthy enough to play the outfield, the last that we heard, which I think was like a week or two ago, he's not even close. No, I don't think he should be playing. I don't know how bad the knee is. I don't know how much rest he would need, how much recovery he would need to get to the point where he could play the outfield. I would like to see him put on the injured list give him some time to recover we got the all-star break coming up when he comes back i would like him to see go on a rehab assignment um unlike the last time he was on the injured list so he can kind of get going again um i just if this guy's half healthy and i and from byron's perspective he's missed so much time he knows he's been labeled as injury prone he's you know i'm sure he's trying to get through this and beat that reputation so you know a credit to him for trying to play through this but i just don't think it's helping i don't think it's the right thing to do for him or the team right now. Um, so I would like to see him go on the injured list. A couple other positions that I think could use a refresh. Behind the plate, I do think Christian Vasquez has been a really good influence and is someone who deserves credit for this pitching staff being as good as it is this year. Um, however, the offense needs help, and Ryan Jeffers is hitting really well. Uh, fair to say, too, that Ryan Jeffers actually, if you look at the pitching splits by catcher, Ryan Jeffers is actually being 
P- pitchers are doing better with Ryan Jeffers across the board than Christian Vasquez. That's not generally something I would really gravitate towards as being a really concrete thing to go with. Um, you know, some of that can depend on who's catching who, who's catching and the, the opponents that you're playing as well, which which catcher is in there when the pitchers are throwing the harder lineups. So I'm not saying that's that's something to really grab onto, but I think it's interesting, especially how different the offensive output is. And the Twins, I think, are 19 and 15 in games that Ryan Jeffers starts. So um, not to say that, you know, I don't value Christian Vasquez, but I do think, and it's been somewhat of a, somewhat of a split, but I think maybe having Jeffers be kind of the primary guy in like a 60-40 split with Jeffers getting the, the bigger share for a while to see if that can help the lineup which is your biggest point of concern right now, I think that's a button to push. And it's an easy one that doesn't require any kind of transactions happening, um, which is something that's kind of keeping some other positions from changing. And we'll get to that too. The outfield, the whole outfield has just been terrible. Terrible, terrible production from the outfield this year. Um, And some of that is tricky to fix because, again, Byron Buxton can't play center field. So you have Michael A. Taylor in center field who... He's been running into some home runs, which is great, but his strikeout percentage, I think, is the second worst on the team, and he doesn't walk at all. So his, you are just getting very little from him in big chunks, and, you know, he brings a lot to the table defensively. He's laid down some nice bunts and does some small ball things well. Um, But I think with, and and it's hard to say this, too, because the corners have been a problem as well. Uh, with the outfield production being what it is, I do think you need to start considering some other options. And what are those options? It's probably like Celestino down in AAA or Andrew Stevenson down in AAA. Stevenson's a 29-year-old former Washington National who I don't think has been in the majors, not this year or last year. So it's been two seasons since he's been in the majors. He's playing really well for the Saints. Unfortunately, both of those guys are left-handed hitters. Um, so that doesn't really work in with the rest of the lineup. However, that does complement Michael A. Taylor pretty well, who's a right-handed hitter. Um, so I think you have to figure out something else there. Of course, Willie Castro is in that picture somewhere um, as well. Um, but the corners have been terrible, too. Max Kepler has been ta- terrible. Joey Gallo has been terrible, especially of late. And it's interesting because, you know, if you're picking between these two guys, uh, just generally Gallo has been more productive, right? than Kepler. However, what are your problems with this team? Strikeouts and Gallo struck out like 40% of the time. So do you if you were going to move on from one of these guys, would it be Gallo to try to fix the strikeout problem? Because Max doesn't strike out a ton and he draws walks. So at least Max has that going for him. Or do you say, well no, Joey Gallo, he's been above average. You know, it's just sort of been, you know, you got to roll ride the the, the waves with him. I, I, I don't feel super strongly about either of them. But I, I don't think that you can keep running out Joey Gallo and Max Kepler on an everyday, basically, basis and expect things to somehow get better. There are some guys on the Saints. You already mentioned a couple of guys in that center field picture, but obviously the guys who we've seen and have been sent down, Jose Miranda, Matt Walner, Trevor Larnick, of course those last two guys fitting into this outfield picture with Miranda more on the infield. Um, but those are all hitters that you know definitely I think they can turn to. Uh, Miranda, again, not an outfield picture guy, but he's a guy that doesn't strike out a lot. Makes a ton of contact. He's starting to turn things around with the Saints. I think he might be an option. That would be more of if you IL Buxton, all of a sudden, boom, DH is open up for somebody. Miranda could be a guy that you turn to there. In the outfield, everybody hits left-handed. How is it possible? How is it possible that all of these guys hit left-handed? It's just ridiculous. Uh, but Matt Walner, you know, obviously, if you follow the channel, we've been talking about how, uh, you know, on a daily basis, he's basically getting it done with the Saints. Um, and he's cut his strikeout rate a ton, Matt Walner has. So he's certainly someone um, who is warranting a run, not just a call up, but a run, a look, an extended look. Trevor Larnick, I don't know. I don't know. I would probably feel, you know, motivated to leave him down in St. Paul for a while. Um, just hasn't clicked for him at the major league level. And I think Walner maybe deserves a run and a look and see if he can take that ball and run with it and and see what happens there. But Larnick is the guy they could turn to as well that's down there. Uh, plenty of other options. you know. So, yeah, they're, you're, you're paying Gallo a lot. You're paying Kepler a pretty good amount of money. Um, cutting bait from one of those guys would sting in that regard. And it wouldn't totally shock me if one of those guys picked up somewhere else and played well. We're seeing that with Aaron Hicks, of all people 
who you know had completely bottomed out with the Yankees. He goes to Baltimore and looks like a completely different guy. That could totally happen. It would not surprise me at all if either Gallo or Kepler could do that. But they, you just kind of have to say, you know, hey, it wasn't working here. Good for you. You know, we're trying this thing. And this is we're confident that this was the right move to make at the time. And just move, move on. Because um, it ain't working. It ain't working. Um, and at a certain point, you just have to try stuff, even if it's not completely obvious that it's going to work. Uh, and I think we've reached that point. I think Rocco Baldelli thinks we've reached that point. Looking forward now, a couple of topics, um, the trade deadline and the draft. Uh, the trade deadline, um, I think, and this is a blanket statement for me, anytime you have a chance to get into the playoffs, you should be trying to get into the playoffs. The Twins ha- obviously have a, uh, the, the Central is still, I know, realize they fell out of first place. The Central is still completely wide open. I do think the Twins should try to add some pieces. I don't think they should try to do a huge overhaul, and they don't really need to, honestly. They don't, and I feel like as long as this pitching staff is pitching well, which it is, they have a shot. Um, if this pitching staff keeps this up, they are going to continue to have a shot, um, so I think they should add. Tr- I've seen a lot of people suggest that they should trade Sonny Gray. I don't get what that accomplishes. Um, you know, I understand he's a pending free agent. I understand the Twins don't seem interested in signing him long term you can offer him a qualifying offer if you trade him away this team is going to be a lot worse um if the pitching isn't as good as it is they don't have a shot anymore um and at that point it's like well, what's the, you got fire everybody if you're trading sunny gray the whole front office has got to go the co- coaching staff should just start over you know because you've you've basically thrown in the white flag on this season this the other option the other the other topic excuse me going forward is the draft and i just want to call out that uh, Jeremy Nygaard put out his most recent mock draft, which shows his picks for not only the Twins' number one pick, but actually their second pick as well, uh, which is in the 30s. So go check that out. I don't want to give spoilers away, uh, but go check that out. Draft season is coming up. I'm not a big draft expert. I certainly will be uh, relaying some information on the guys as they come in. Uh, so I, I, if I were to talk about the draft, it would be basically just me regurgitating stuff from Jeremy and Jamie Cameron from Twins Daily. So I will suggest you just go straight to the source there and check those guys out. I'll put some links in the uh, uh, down in the description to some of their recent work. But um, the, a lot, a lot covered there. Again, uh, just wanted to kind of get some thoughts out on a lot of these topics that kind of didn't fit inside the conversation of the system recap world. So thanks so much. You let me know what you're thinking. Uh, Thanks so much for watching this. Thank you to all the channel members. Here are the premium members listed. We'll talk again soon.